Hi, I'm Tom Edwards. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the role that artificial intelligence is going to play with the advancement of robotics. So going back to the, the late 70s, one of my very first memories was watching Star Wars. I loved C-3PO and R2-D2 and the idea of you know, space and technology and experiences, and specifically robotics, has been a passion area of mine since, since I can remember. So I was recently asked by a publication a number of uh, thoughts around the impact of AI and robotics. Welcome to Innovation to Reality. Today's topic is going to be all about artificial intelligence and robotics. I'm Tom Edwards. I'll be your host today. You can reach me, obviously, at Blackfin360, and I'm the Chief Digital Officer of the Agency Business at Epsilon. So as part of Innovation to Reality, I like to talk a lot about the E caret 3 framework. And E caret 3 really stands for this exponential acceleration that's happening all around us. I used to talk about how disruption is the new normal. Now I feel as though through intelligent systems, we're going to see this rapid acceleration. And there are three core territories. Empowerment of the consumer through technology, enhancement of experience through intelligent systems, and the blending of physical and digital within the environment. So with this today, we're going to focus a little bit more on the enhance area and really dive into robotics. So I was recently asked by a major publication a few questions around a multitude of topics tied to robotics, and I want to go through this today. So we'll start with how do we define robotic intelligence? Robotic intelligence is defined as a robot that functions as an intelligent machine. It can be programmed to take actions or make choices based on how it's programmed. When I personally think about robotic intelligence, I immediately envision autonomous machines that are essentially independent. And I've got to admit, it also leans into some of the entertainment territory. I immediately think about C-3PO from Star Wars, or I think about the T-800 from Terminator, or HAL 9000 from 2001 Space Odyssey. A lot of numbers associated with, uh, with uh, robotics. Anyway, so, but when I actually peel the, the layers of robotic intelligence back right now, especially thinking about the role that AI plays, and you start thinking about all the various facets of AI from machine learning and deep learning and computer vision all kind of rolled into one, I really think about the role that algorithms play as a foundational element to robotic intelligence. So when you think about an algorithm, it's really just this process or it's a set of rules or calculations that basically allow for problem solving by a computer. And when you combine this idea of uh, robotic intelligence, robots with artificial intelligence, you know, we're also beginning to look towards this idea of emotional connections between robots and systems as well. So the next wave is really going to be around this, this mindset and shift from not only leveraging artificial intelligence for problem solving, there's also going to be this focus around this emotional connection tied to the human experience through robotics as well. So now that we've talked about robotic intelligence, how far along the road are we towards having truly intelligent robots? So we've primarily seen single-purpose robots to date. So you think about iRobot and the Roomba, you think about uh, you know, some of the toys that have come on the market over the past few years, Furbies, for example. And we, now we're in the mindset of how can we shift towards multi-purpose robotics through artificial intelligence? So most AI and robotic systems to today, you categorize those as what's called narrow, artificial narrow intelligence. It means they're extremely adept at executing specific tasks. As we begin to see advancements in hardware, though, and this kind of potential commercialization of really, really sophisticated algorithms that are potentially going to combine emotion and cognition, we're going to move towards these kind of first artificial general intelligence entities that should come online sometime between uh, now and 2025. So beyond that, you know, there's also discussion and talk of you know, creation of artificial super intelligence as well. So the roadmap forward again is going from narrow intelligence to general intelligence to potentially super intelligence. So in what ways is artificial intelligence acting actually making robots better? Well, 
AI is definitely at the core of how robots are basically expanding their capabilities beyond kind of these single function to really understanding environmental context. They have the ability to infer things from emotions to different aspects of intuition. And they're also increasing their tolerance for ambiguity. So it's what we do as humans every day and as we just kind of process our environment and the information that's coming towards us. And one area of focus right now is really around this concept of socio-emotive AI. So this is allowing artificial intelligence to understand and treat people as people. So in order to move beyond this, this phase of a single-minded vacuum cleaner that's gonna clean your house to something that can truly interact with you and connect with you in more of a, a human type interface. This is an incredibly important area. So machine learning allows for these systems to understand a number of what's called like psychosocial perception and learning and interaction and expression. So this is how systems and AI are going to make robots better at emotionally connecting with humans. And AI is definitely the key to that connection. So when we start thinking about, you know, so how then are, what, in what ways are robots or emotionally fueled robots, you know, driven by AI likely to have, you know, the greatest impact? Well, as it stands now, so as you start thinking about the availability, how much information is available now via open source? So you've got all these machine learning libraries, you have you know, all this open research being done by Facebook and Google. They're empowering third-party developers you know, to take and build out all of, you know, on top of their software development kits. And you have all these APIs to take advantage of. So the first thing is, again, we start, I like to always start with the vacuum cleaners and use that as an example. But you're even seeing disruption in that space, taking the simplest form of robotic. And you know, you've got a company like Ecovac, where they're actually using LiDAR to map your home. It's learning to optimize cleaning patterns over time. You know, this same interface, the same device, is eventually going to become a node in a larger connected ecosystem that can interface with other intelligent systems that's going to create this environment that's customized just for you versus you directing the technology. So here it's all about the AI creating seamless, predictive, and enhancing experiences. So. Ecovac doesn't really consider itself a vacuum company. They're a robotics company that happens to make vacuum cleaners. And that's a significant shift. So, and that's where the consumer kind of growth potential is today. Another area is potentially tied to this area of, of home companions. So back in 2015, I was introduced to Jibo while I was at South by Southwest. And last year, uh, in 2017, or this year, I met Curie at this year's South by Southwest. Curie is a, is a cute little robot that's being developed by Mayfield Robotics. Um, what you're seeing on screen now is the, the actual pre-order thank you gift. So they sent out a great little booklet that talked about the entire evolution of the system and all the various iterations that it's taken to get to this point. But the key thing here, when Curie arrives in my house in the early spring, I am going to see how it kind of enhances the daily lives of the family. So I can interact with the robot, the robot can take pictures. There are a number of use cases tied to this home companion uh, idea to where eventually you're seeing this connection between emotive robotics, artificial intelligence, and you know, the actual systems coming together. One of the other things to really consider, you know, when you think about the impact of AI and robotics, you can also, you'll also begin to see the rise of robots as potential wellness hubs. So think about it as a way to humanize a wellness interface. You know, there was a lot of research, you know, this basically, basically it's the humanizing of the interface into IoT. And the studies have shown that patient adherence to prescribed treatment is significantly higher when using a robot versus a website or another means. So again, it's taking this idea of robotics driven by artificial intelligence that's then going to then also drive you know, behaviors and hopefully enhance our lives on a daily basis. So there's a lot of discussion in the marketplace around dangers associated with you know, AI and, and robotics. There's a lot of fear. 
And in my mind, a lot of this is really driven by past entertainment experiences. I mean, I've already mentioned the Terminator. You think of Skynet. Uh, you think of, of Ultron from the Avengers and all the machines in the Matrix. All of these instances show an AI hive mind. This basically controls all these other constituent members. So this fully connected, autonomous, super intelligent, without safeguards could pose a future threat. But the reality is a majority of AI systems are designed to augment our intelligence and really provide new, new ways to enhance our daily lives. It's not necessarily a gloom and doom future where we all become batteries in the matrix. So one of the, one of the core areas, so will people ever be able to work alongside robots or will we be replaced? So one of the core areas of AI that, I'm a AI that I'm actually really interested in is this idea of, and I'm a big believer in intelligence augmentation. So it's where you know, autonomous systems, they can supplement and support human thinking. They can support analysis. You know, we can combine the strengths of human and robotics and basically create these kind of human computer interaction inter touch points to where we're leveraging the best from the systems, but yet we're still applying the, the innately human elements and making our lives better. So again, in my mind, I feel like AI and robotics can lead to new forms of personal empowerment. And this can, again, help us to, to better ourselves. So I, I'm actually often asked, where do I find AI talent? You know, how, whether you're a robotics manufacturer or you know, a, a corporation. Well, one path is to tap into the open source developer communities. You look at GitHub, you, know, you look at companies like Google, they publish their open source code. You know, they have, you know, whether it's TensorFlow, which is kind of their neural network library, you can see who engages with the code, who actually deploys, who actually tests. You know, they'll ask for various identifiers, you know, they'll, you know, appending code, tagging public demonstrations through social channels. Finding the right talent, it really becomes an exercise of understanding who's engaging, experimenting, and deploying the various tools. That are the, is, then you can basically begin to map and see, does it potentially fit my business? But that's an area that a lot of people don't really know. It's, it's not just about posting a job on LinkedIn. It's really getting into who's using, experimenting, and playing with the technology. So AI and robotics, all right. In what directions is AI likely to lead the robotics industry over the next several years? Again, I foresee a rapid acceleration of intelligent systems that's gonna impact both robotics and other various forms of computing. So we're gonna see the advancement through AI of virtual assistants. We're gonna see that combined with computer vision. It's gonna provide this contextual understanding of the environment. We're gonna see this rise of, of location data also being appended this idea of synthetic reality where intelligent systems are also going to be aligning with immersive computing. So AR, VR, converging, redefining our reality. And it's actually this whole construct around mixed reality as well. So AI is going to not only redefine the physical manifestation of robotics. So you think about a physical robot like a curie that's sitting in your room that's interacting with you. But there's also going to be this construct of virtual robotics as well. So you've got artificial intelligence entities that are then servicing through virtual assistants that can sometimes be a physical entity that sits on your desk. And again, that sometimes that assistant can be pervasive. You look at Google's model right now with Google Assistant, and this is very close. You've got Google Home, which is sitting there on your desk, but the assistant is pervasive across Home, across Wear, across Android, across iPhone, across a number of different touch points to where ultimately the intelligence behind the systems are going to be less tied to the hardware. So it's not just always going to be about a physical robot. So the intelligence can go from physical hardware to virtual very quickly. And so this leads me to kind of the final point here, which is this idea, you know, I'm a marketer, so I think about this quite a bit. I think about the role that virtual assistants play in our everyday life. I think about the role potentially or new ways, thinking of new family robots as content delivery systems, for one example. So you think about the Jibo that you're able to actually take and build content uh, experiences within that and deliver them through the face of the robot. So again, 
it's this evolution. You're, you're seeing it too in terms of even some of the basic, basic form factors. You look at the Amazon Alexa show, for example, and um, you're combining the voice plus visual. So again, it's this idea that over time, virtual assistants or AI-driven entities are going to continue to take on more responsibility from our day-to-day -day lives. And at some point, it's going to be less about marketing directly to individuals. And then we're also going to be marketing to algorithms. So it's incredibly important to understand that data is the fuel for AI, and AI is the method of learning for most robotics. So machine learning is going to allow for this rapid synthesis of all of these different types of data. And again, what you have to do is you have to understand that as an organization, whether you're undergoing any type of digital transformation initiative or whatever it is, you have to evaluate the impact of intelligent systems on your business models. You have to plan for how the merging of artificial intelligence and intelligence augmentation are potentially going to, uh, going to enhance the workforce. So with that, thank you again for joining me today on another Innovation to Reality video. All right, that's it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video on the combination of artificial intelligence and robotics. Um, if you have any additional questions, you can always reach me on Twitter at Blackfin360. Um, otherwise, content is posted at blackfin360.com. All right, have a great day.